Hey, I'm Jumpy. I watched two more movies for this video. There's the robot movie Megan and the shark movie The Meg. Right off the bat, I gotta say there's absolutely no reason why I put these together in the same video. They're just two movies I wanted to see. So let's get to the first film, Megan. This one came out in January 2023. It was directed by Gerard Johnstone. It wasn't until after I finished watching Megan that I realized that he had also directed the 2014 New Zealand horror comedy Housebound, which I saw a few years ago and enjoyed quite a bit. What convinced me to watch Megan initially is James Wan's involvement. I love his movies, in particular Dead Silence and The Conjuring 2. His last completed movie Malignant is an acquired taste. I really like that one, but I know people who hated it and I can't blame them. Akela Cooper wrote the screenplays to both Malignant and Megan. With both movies, she co-wrote the story with James Wan. And in the case of Malignant, Ingrid Bisu also helped with the story. And I apologize if I'm mispronouncing Ingrid's last name. I couldn't find an interview or YouTube video to confirm. So we have another movie now with almost the same writing credits as Malignant, but a different director. So how does Megan stack up? The movie is about a woman named Gemma, played by Allison Williams from Get Out. She has to look after her young niece, Katie, after an unfortunate accident kills the girl's parents. Gemma works for a toy company making technologically advanced toys. Her pet project is Megan, which is an acronym for Model 3 Generative Android, but things aren't going great. After seeing Katie's interest in her earlier robot, Bruce, Gemma fully commits to finishing the life like Megan, and a heartfelt journey follows in which the girl establishes a bond with the robot. And when that bond is threatened, it does not tickle Megan's fancy. Now right off the bat, this is a more accessible movie than Malignant. It's more predictable and not nearly as weird, but it has its own quirky charm. While I didn't enjoy Megan quite as much as Malignant overall, it's a very entertaining little movie. It opens with a satirical fake toy commercial, and I didn't like it and thought that it was too silly and the jokes fell flat. Thankfully, the movie tones it down after the opening because I would have quickly turned into a disinterested robot if the movie had continued like that. From there on out, it's not subtle or very serious overall, but it's at least slightly more realistic than that commercial, which makes it funnier to me. Obviously, the movie isn't scary. It's got a few short bursts of tension, but they're not very effective, and it's whatever. The movie works in other areas, and the goal wasn't to horrify the audience. I watched the unrated version of the film. With regards to the mature content, they say fuck a few times, and there's a couple violent bits that I know wouldn't be allowed in a PG-13. It did remind me of a few other movies. One of these was the Child's Play remake from 2019. That one was different from the originals, but I fucking loved it and thought it was a lot of fun. Both Child's Play 2019 and Megan have technologically advanced dolls killing people to protect a kid. Also, some of Megan's movements reminded me of the movie Upgrade which has a fun connection. That movie was written and directed by Lee Whannell, who has worked with James Wan multiple times, namely writing Dead Silence, as well as writing and acting in the first Saw movie and the first two Insidious movies. So that may have been an intentional reference. Megan has very obvious themes of our over-dependence on technology and what can go wrong when we lose the human interaction. Thankfully, I didn't feel like it hammers it into your head in an obnoxious way. Gemma is very hands-off in her parenting. She just lets Megan do all the work, and this isn't good for Katie. I guess you could say that Gemma really sharks her responsibilities as Katie's guardian. Oh, fuck. I should have used that joke when I talk about the shark movie. Oh, wait. I, I, got, I got another one. You might call Gemma's parenting style null and void, but it's more like doll android. Okay, that, that one works for this movie. While Megan doesn't go as far off the rails as Malignant, it's very enjoyable when it does. It's very well paced in its buildup and it doesn't overdo it. And you know what? There's gonna be a Megan 2 in a couple years. I'm looking forward to it. I really enjoyed watching Megan. It's a solid seven out of 10 for me. Check it out if you want a fun little horror movie. The second film I watched is The Meg, which is the latest movie directed by John Turtletob. He directed Cool Runnings, which I haven't seen since I was a kid, as well as While You Were Sleeping, Phenomenon, and National Treasure, all of which I've seen more recently but I'm not a fan of. Sorry. The Meg was released in 2018, and I went into this one with modest expectations. Now right off the boat, this one gets off to a rough start. You have the main character Jonas, who's played by Jason Statham. Jonas is an anagram for Jason. 
He's rescuing some people from a submarine. I just didn't find it exciting. Unfortunately for the trapped characters, Jonas can only save about half of them before hightailing it out of there as the sub blows up due to something attacking it. Five years later, a billionaire played by Rain Wilson shows up at the research facility that he's funding, which is located off the coast of China. These scenes where he's meeting the crew just fell off to me. The humor wasn't cutting it, and I was thinking this movie was going to be a very long 113 minutes. My expectations were rendered null and void by this point. It was turning me into a disinterested robot. A cyborg, if you will. Oh, fuck. I should have used that joke when I was talking about the robot movie. Oh, wait, I got another one. The opening of The Meg did nautical my fancy. Okay, I like that. That's better. After that, some researchers investigate very deep in the ocean, and they're attacked by something and go offline. This movie was getting a little better at this point. Well, it turns out that only one person can save them. Off to Thailand they go to recruit Jonas. It turns out his ex-wife is one of the trapped researchers. It's not even that implausible that they were married. I mean, they're in the same field and likely met that way. But this coincidence just made me laugh when it was revealed for some reason. And this is where I really started to like the movie. I will say, I felt like it continued to get better as it went along, and I was totally aboard by the climax. The Meg is a Megalodon, a shark that's over 70 feet long. It's absolutely absurd, but the movie takes itself relatively seriously. It does get more ridiculous towards the end, but it never goes far enough that it lost me. A lot of the humor comes from the dialogue and character interactions. None of it was amazing or laugh out loud funny, but some of the exchanges are good. I like the ensemble cast, especially Su Yin. She's played by Lee Bing Bing, who I know best as Ada Wong in Resident Evil Retribution, the fifth movie in that series. Maybe someday I will talk about those movies more in depth, but not right now, because I'm talking about The Meg. There's some nice scenes between Su Yin and her father who runs the operation, and with her young daughter. Jonas also has a couple good scenes with them as well. There's not too much, but there's a little bit of heart to the movie, and I did like what was there. And I should point out that Rain Wilson got better too, and I liked him outside of those first scenes. Maybe he just grew on me and I'll think his introduction is fine if I rewatch this. Ruby Rose, who was in Resident Evil The Final Chapter, has a few moments to shine with her character in The Meg, as does the actor Paige Kennedy, who shares a last name with a character in the Resident Evil series. And there's also a shark in the first Resident Evil game, and a submarine in Resident Evil Code Veronica, and a ship in Resident Evil Revelations. I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself bringing it up again. Continuing on, the Meg CGI was very noticeable at times, but I'm letting it pass. It never dwells on it too long, and it didn't really take me out of the movie. The shark scenes were a lot of fun. Dare I say, magnificent. A few deaths actually surprised me, and there were some nice misdirects. It certainly doesn't shirk its responsibilities in that regard. And you know what? There's going to be a The Meg 2 coming out in a couple weeks. I'm actually looking forward to it. The start of The Meg was kind of weak, but I eventually started enjoying it and had a lot of fun. A very solid 6 out of 10. Both movies were pretty good, so watch them if they sound interesting to you. I hope everyone is doing well and keeping safe, and I'll see you next time.